Raise up your right hand to the heavenlies, beloved, and declare this louder than anyone around you. Oh God, arise! And let my case be such on the heaven. In the name of Jesus. Let my case be settled. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Wonderful God, we thank you for this evening. We we'll give you praise. We we'll give you honor. We we'll give you adoration. We thank you for the visitation of your power. And we thank you for what you do here on this mountain on Wednesday. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Tonight, lay your hands upon us. Open our understanding. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's have a seat. God bless you. Tonight, beloved, we're looking at what I call the secret of power. The secret of power. The secret of power. Genesis chapter 27 verse 40. Genesis chapter 27 verse oh. 40. The secret of power. The first point one would like to make very strongly is that real power is spiritual power. Real power is spiritual power. And whenever spiritual power has to confront physical power, as a matter of necessity, the physical power must bow. There is no power really on this realm. The correct power is the spiritual power. So yeah. let's read our Genesis chapter 27, verse 40. And by thy sword shalt thou live, and shall serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. It shall come to pass, he says, when you have the dominion, that is when you are strong, when you are now capable to dominate, it is then you remove the yoke from off thy neck. Therefore, if a stronger power puts a yoke on somebody, to try to remove it is to beg for a greater punishment until you are strong enough to do it. Now in the book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. Matthew 10, 1 says this. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them what? Power against unclean spirit to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of disease. So, to drive out an evil spirit, you need power. To heal sicknesses, you need power. Jesus gave them power. No wonder the Bible says, Be strong in the Lord and in the fullness of his mind. Power is a very strange word. Sometimes very, very difficult to define. Because power is part of everyday life. For example, you have the physical power to be here now, so you are here tonight. For example, you have the mental power to understand what is being communicated here. For example, the power in your car or in your bus or in your motorcycle allowed you to start this money and to move. Power is a strange word indeed. There is somebody in this world now who is known as a heavyweight boxing champion. And he had won the world title several times. Here was a man, when you are with him on the ring and you don't know what you are doing, you will fall flat and he will break your head off with his blows. But the same man now was jailed for trying to rape a woman. So the 
power that he had in the boxing ring did not control his emotions. There was another power that now overcame him. So power is a very strange word indeed. When we are talking about power, we are talking about many things. We are talking about ability. We are talking about spiritual ability. We are talking about spiritual competence. We are talking about spiritual capability. We are talking about spiritual capacity. We are talking about spiritual effectiveness. We are talking about spiritual efficacy. We are talking about spiritual energy. Spiritual energy. And this is a very serious matter. Many years back, we had a crusade, an open-air crusade. Now, if you don't have the power of God in your life, woe unto you if you go and stand and open the air and say you are declaring a crusade. It means you want to die young. Because it's a dangerous arena to go. And they arranged so many ministers on that high table at the crusade. Beloved, I was not sleeping. Right there, by the time the crusade went on, some people wearing rappers and white gathered at the back of the field. I was looking at them. I wasn't the one minister. Somebody else was preaching. But I could see them afar off. And they gathered in a circle. And they put their head as if they were bowing down to the ground. All of a sudden, from their center, an arrow came up. And the arrow changed direction. I was running straight to the altar. I saw it coming. When it was about to get to the altar, it divided itself like tongues of fire for every minister that was there. And I could see it entering into some people's bodies. And I could see it backfiring in some people's bodies. But those that backfired went back straight to them. They were still in that circle. And there was terrible pandemonium amongst them. If your spiritual energy is strong enough, when arrows are fired at you, it has only one option. To go back to where it came from. But in the situation where it enters... It means there is no sufficient power. Let's get something straight, beloved. A lot of people go for deliverance. I've been attacked. I was attacked. I, I was attacked. They fired an arrow. It entered into my body. If the enemy fires an arrow at you and it enters into your body, your first question is not who fired the arrow. No. The first question is why did it penetrate my body? This is part of why we are teaching like this tonight. When we are talking about power, we are talking about spiritual force. We are talking about spiritual might. We are talking about spiritual potency. We are talking about spiritual strength. When we are talking about spiritual power, we are talking about spiritual voltage. When you are highly charged with supernatural, divine, electric power. If anybody lays evil hands on you, the voltage power in your life will shock them. When we're talking about spiritual power, we're talking about spiritual control, spiritual dominion, to say this is where you stay. You can't leave that place. We're talking about spiritual supremacy. That's what you mean by power. When we're talking about spiritual power, we're talking about having spiritual last word. The last word, you are the one that spoke it. And that's the one that is relevant to the situation. Tonight, beloved, it will be a tragedy if you go home from this meeting and the enemy still finds you very easy to manipulate or very easy to penetrate. Power is a strange word indeed. And that's why defining it sometimes is difficult. But however, when you have spiritual power, you have the strength or capacity to accomplish something. You have an ability to exercise control. You have the capacity to overcome. Many years ago, at one open field there called Evans Square, there at uh, around Old Jabba Road, again, a crusade was going on. All of a sudden, there was something like lightning Grrr, into the crusade ground. And instantly, the microphone of the man of God became like charcoal. The wire burned, and the whole of the crusade was thrown into darkness. The man of God now took the microphone and said, Everybody in this crusade, stand up. And they all stood. Now, I'll call this prayer point. 
The arrows of lightning that was fired here now backfire. They prayed with madness. Because a lot of people were violently angry. Holy anger. After five minutes, light came on again. And they continued with a megaphone. All of a sudden, they rushed a man to the crusade. I have never seen that kind of picture before. And I don't want to see it again. When they brought in this man, it was as if somebody threw him into a boiling oil. The skin was completely peeled off. And they brought him. He was a native doctor. He fired the arrow. But by the time the children of God sent the arrow back, it had roasted him. And they wanted to take him to the hospital. He said, no, 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 no. no. Don't take me to the hospital. Take me to that crusade. Say, Baba, what, what are you going to do in the crusade? You're a native doctor. Say, take me there. That was what saved his life. This small prayer of repentance, confession, forgiveness, they pray for him. Whenever a greater power comes across a smaller power, as a matter of necessity, the smaller power must bow. Can you raise up your voices and shout this loud and clear? That arrows of darkness assigned to disgrace me. Backfire in the name of Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. Listen, beloved. This our generation of Christians is a generation of powerless Christians. In fact, our powerlessness has become legendary. Our ignorance has become monumental. Beloved, it's compulsory and important for us to have the power of God in our lives in this new generation that is coming up. Our lives must generate the power of God. Sister, you must become a power generator. Brother, you must become a power generator. It's a lamentable tragedy to stay at the footmat of the enemy because of lack of power. It's a lamentable tragedy that the enemy drags people on the floor the way they like. It's a lamentable tragedy. As I'm talking to you tonight, I'm very angry, my spirit, because of our chronic powerlessness. Chronic powerlessness. And this is very sad. I think it was 1995 or so, I've forgotten that. I used to be somebody who troubles the Geo here. Geo, I want to work for Jesus. Give me work, give me work. Post me out. I have power. I said, okay. We posted him to a place called Ajino. For those of you who know a little bit about Ajino, you know in Lagos here, when people die and you want to know who killed them, the place to go is Ajino. So he was posted there. One day, he was defecating in a farm of somebody. The farmer saw him, but he didn't see the farmer. The farmer now took the flat side of a cutlass and tiptoed to his back and slapped him at the back with the flat side of the cutlass. Why are you defecating my farm? The force of the blow was so much, the pastor some assaulted, and his feces came all over his body. He was so angry when he stood up. He said, you this man, because you used cutlass to slap a man of God. You will die within seven days. The farmer was initially afraid. Maybe he now went home and consulted his idols. And those ones said, don't worry yourself. So every day he was going to the pastor. I said, pastor, I'm still alive, oh. On the eighth day, the farmer came and said, pastor, I'm not dead yet. Now, if there is any power of God in that life, the life of the pastor, that pronouncement that he made, the man will not last for three days. That's why I say our powerlessness is completely legendary. The children of darkness are going deeper and deeper to go and get power. But we, the children of the kingdom, we have nothing. We are not even trying. There are people who go to pray for the sick and they come back with the sickness. I know one woman that drove to our house with one hand. 
She was traveling abroad. Uh, the housemate did something wrong. She slapped the housemate. And the housemate said, that hand that you use, you won't use it again. And the hand refused to perform. She drove with that hand, looking for somebody to pray for her. Beloved, these things are not supposed to be so. Many ministers and church goers don't even understand themselves. It's an insult to your salvation for somebody to hypnotize you. Magic voodoo to work on you. It's a terrible, terrible insult. You must make up your mind. In light of what we're going through now, that you want to be God's agents on earth. Satan's agents cannot be God's agents. They know and believe there is God, but they do not receive him. Because the Bible says, as many as received him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God. God will not send angels here to come and do our work for us. Because the angels themselves have often wondered what it feels like to be redeemed. If God commissioned angels to come and preach the gospel, everyone will be empty in five minutes. Because they know the implication. They will run down here and do the work. God will not use those who are already saved who are in heaven. God will not use those who are lost and already in hellfire. God will not use those who are lost on earth. The instrument God has to use is you and I. Meaning that if you and I fail, then Christ has no other witnesses. Before Pentecost, because Jesus told them, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Before Pentecost, the doors were shut because of the fear of the Jews. Because at that time, the power without was greater than the power within. After Pentecost, these same, these same doors were thrown wide open. Because the power inside is now greater than the power outside. Every Christian is supposed to be a walking miracle. We need to move in a way that witches, wizards, all those funny, funny names, they'll be afraid when they see us coming. Without controversy, beloved, there is too much of powerlessness around us. The Bible says, let God arise and let all his enemies be scattered. But we present day Christians who have worshipped so much modern idols, the power of God has flown out. We have allowed every other thing to arise, but God would not allow him to arise. A time will come, beloved, when the voice will come to you, either from your husband, from your wife, from your family, from your friends. They will ask the question, are you the one who will deliver us, or should we look for another? A time will come when, like Elijah, the unprofitable invitation will come. Man of God, come down. You ought to be able to answer like Elijah. If I be a man of God, let fire fall. A time will come when your God will be challenged like they challenged the God of the psalmist. They will ask, where is the Lord your God? Show him to us. And you ought to be able to say like Elijah. Say, God, if you are still there, show it. And he showed it by fire. The Bible says that know their God shall be great and they shall do exploit. If you do not know your God or you have his power, in the coming storm, you will be in serious trouble. How sad will it be, beloved, for you to get to heaven? And God begins to point your attention to some people who are in hellfire. And say, your powerlessness, let them, allow them to come here. Your powerlessness brought them here. There is nothing like sudden powerlessness. It is a gradual thing. Thank God you come for these meetings. But God wants you to be filled with power. Husbands, wives, children, sinners. They are waiting for you to get on fire. So that God can use you to burn away the plantation of the enemy in their lives. Powerlessness is when your enemies are having the upper hand. That's why you need the power. Powerlessness is when you are fed constantly without any resistance by night caterers. I know somebody who was fed in the dream. By the time he woke up, the okra they gave to him was still dripping from his mouth. Powerlessness is when you pray against something for someone and the problem comes to you. Powerlessness is when demonic power stretches you and it comes to pass. Powerlessness is when the arrows of the enemy begin to manifest in your body. Powerlessness is when you begin to speak the language of defeat. Powerlessness is when you begin to consult beggarly powers that you had formerly renounced. 
Powerlessness is when you are singing songs of defeat when there is a problem. You certainly don't want Jesus to come now because I'm not ready. Because there is a problem and you are powerless to fight. Now I began to sing. Come down, O Lord Jesus. Come down, O Lord Jesus. The world is full of sorrow. The world is full of woe. Come down, O Lord Jesus. And certainly you don't want him to come. But you are only singing because there is a problem. Powerlessness is when all sicknesses that have disappeared in your life begins to come back. Powerlessness is when you are crying, when you should be praising God. Powerlessness is when you are weeping and mourning, when you should be praying. Powerlessness is binding and losing. Why? What you are binding is staring you in the face and laughing at you. I was in London 19, 1988 or so, and I was in my house. One bishop came and said, um, um, and Dr. Luca, please follow me to somewhere. Let's go and pray for somebody. And I followed him there. Oh, God, there. We saw this woman sitting on the floor and looking at us as if we dropped from the space. Bishop began to speak. I bind you, demonic power, in this woman in the name of Jesus. All of a sudden, from the throat of the woman came the voice of the demon. I said, Bishop, I bind you too in the name of Jesus. Bishop now screamed. Shut up in the name of Jesus. The demon said, shut up in the name of Jesus. So Bishop took his Bible and was walking out and leaving him behind. Powerlessness. Powerlessness is when witches and wizards have made your house a bus stop. Why going to their meetings, they urinate on your roof a little bit, then go away. Powerlessness is when you have bush baby crying by your window and you cannot silence them. Powerlessness is when you bind the bindables, lose the losables, shake the shakables, nothing happens. Powerlessness is when you wept your eyes, saw and declared, never again will I commit abortion, never again will I commit fornication, but the next minute you are there again. Powerlessness is when somebody puts magic, juju, voodoo power under your seat, under your roof, and it's affecting you. They brought one pastor to us many years back. For six months, this pastor had not been to the toilet. And not that he doesn't want to go to the toilet. But any time he got to the toilet and he's, he's trying to sit down to ease himself, one voice will say, what, what, what do you want to do? What, 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 are you, what do you want to do? Come on, stand up! And he will stand, and he can't go. Paralysis is when you are threatened with death. And fear now grips your heart. And you begin to dream of death. Paralysis is when they slap you in your dream and you feel the effect of the slap to real life. Paralysis is when you are constantly being pursued in your dream by all kinds of things. Paralysis is when divine healing is becoming a strange word to you. Paralysis is when your ability to do spiritual assignment begins to reduce and you know you no longer regularly hear from the Lord. Paralysis is when you begin to sing the Lord's song in a strange land. The question I will ask you tonight is that will you allow the enemy to eat you up? Will you allow the eaters of flesh and drinkers of blood to finish the agenda? Are you aware that most of the people who die and are buried in the cemetery didn't die at the time they want to die? Are you aware that there are people who have been pursued their night by the spirit of death and who cannot even sleep in their houses? Are you aware that there are such people all over the place are you aware that many times when we go to the cemetery and we say the Lord has given, the Lord has taken, blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord did not take them. It's household witchcraft. It is due to spiritual powerlessness. When the enemy comes against a person, it can either come by force or through a ladder. Either by force or through a ladder. When the enemy comes by force, like an arm robber, he can catch a person. And stuff life off of the person. This is why we must know the secret of power generation. This is why we must pray that God should catapult us from where you are now to the level of power that he wants us to be. This is why we need to pray that the Lord should give us the kind of power that cannot be insulted by any power of darkness. Can you close your eyes and raise up your hand to the heavenly again? And as many people as want something to happen in their lives tonight. 
Let them shout this louder than anyone around there. Power that cannot be insulted by any power of darkness. Oh God, arise and pour it upon my life in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, power that cannot be insulted by any power of darkness. Listen to Kaya Boshan Terabarabo Karaba in Jesus' name we pray. Uh-huh. Amen. Well, not, we have not started praying yet. <laughs> we have not started praying yet. When you begin the prayer on power, your body, your soul, your spirit will know that something has gone wrong. And your body, your soul, your spirit will know that. You are not ready to take no for an answer. Secrets of power. There are basically seven. But I'm going to concentrate on the most important one. The most important one. I want you to understand that there is no shortcut to spiritual power. No shortcut. Seven secrets of power generation. Number one. And which is very, very serious and important. You must be a friend of the ultimate power. A friend of the ultimate power. The power of God is the only absolute power. The power of God is the only power that cannot be contested with. The power of God is the only power that no man can pull down. If you want to plug your life into the socket of his power, then you must become his friend. Meaning that you need to completely surrender your life to God Almighty. Two, you must discover yourself. You must discover who you are. That is, you must know your destiny. Jesus said, the son of man goeth as it is written of him. You could be spirit free, but if you don't discover yourself, you will still be useless. Don't delay in finding out the answers of who you should really be. They came to John the Baptist and said, who are you? Are you Jesus? He said, no. Are you Elijah? He said, no. Are you that prophet that is to come? He said, no. He said, what are you then? What are you? He said, I am the voice of him that cried in the wilderness. He knew who he was. Three. You must clear your foundations. Clear your foundation from the evil power of your father's house. Because if you are operating from a terrible foundation, you are writing letters to powerlessness. Many pastors rise up and fall again. Many miss their calling and destiny because they've not addressed their foundations. Four. You must be broken. Become the Lamb of God. Lamb of God. Not somebody who is given to argument and noises and strife, anger, bitterness, and everybody knows who has a fighter in the streets. Not that kind of person. Number five. You must receive genuine fire of the Holy Ghost. Genuine fire of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost baptism that many of us say we have needs to be checked doctorally. Because if it is the true one, your life will change like the life of the apostles. Six. You must become a prayer addict and a Bible addict. A prayer addict and a Bible addict. Seven. For you to have power with God, you must die to the flesh. You must die to the flesh. Reminds me about that man of God. Who pray, oh God, fill me with power. He pray for seven days, no food, no water, no drink. On the seventh day, Jesus appeared in his room and said, okay, you want power? Then, I have to kill you. He said, ah, you can't kill me, sir. You can't kill me, I want power. This I want to die. 
He said, yes. He said, but Shaka, unless I kill you, there is no power. So unless you die. He said, but if I die, how will I do the work then? He said, it is your flesh that should die. If you control your flesh and bring it under subjection, you don't need to pray for power. It is automatic. It will come. Our flesh is this sin tendencies in our lives. Our flesh is the Adamic nature we have inherited. Our flesh is the old patterns by which we attempt to get on with our lives. Our flesh is our old ways of living our lives. Our flesh is those destructive habits that we have patterned our life over, over the years. Our flesh is the self-life. It's that thing in us that I want to do it in my own way. Our flesh is the built-in law of spiritual failure. To be quite honest with you, beloved, the basic problem all of us face is ourselves, our flesh. And the most continual, aggressive enemy of the Christian is the flesh. Our flesh is our sinful nature, or what the Bible calls the old man. Our flesh is that natural inclination to satisfy ourselves. Our flesh is the pride spirit inside of us. The self-centeredness, myself, myself. That is selfish. Our flesh is the evil capacity within us. Our flesh is the witch inside of us. If we do not deal with Mr. Flesh, we cannot correctly, completely generate the power of God in our lives. So the seven secrets are what I've told you. The last one is the most serious, which is you, the Mr. Flesh must die. But where people sometimes have problems is this. As a man of God, how do I overcome the flesh? I'll tell you before we start praying now. Do you want to overcome the strategies of the flesh? And you want the flesh to die in your life? The first thing to do is in Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. I read from verse 1. Romans 12 verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind, that ye may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So the first key to overcoming the flesh is to present your body as a sacrifice. Present your body as a sacrifice. When you give a sacrifice, you no longer have control over it. It is given totally. When you join the army, you come under the complete control of your superiors. They control your conduct. They control your dressing. They give instructions to you on how to combat the enemy. So to overcome the flesh, beloved, you must bring yourself completely under divine control. Totally, absolutely, completely, without any reservation, without keeping anything behind. Unfortunately. Many of us are like that man. Who say, God, yes, I want you to kill me. And God said, okay, enter that coffin. But as God was asking him to enter the coffin, he had a in his pocket. And as they put him inside the coffin, he only waited a few minutes before he began to use his hammer. Present yourself as a living sacrifice. Totally to God. All these things that others are so excited about using. When you are a living sacrifice, you surrender all to Jesus. Drop everything. You don't bother about what some people are saying about the way you look. And he said, they say, I'm looking like a man. They say, I'm looking like this, I'm looking like that. Somebody in the darkness has no right to be telling you how to run your life. Number two, arm yourself with the mind of Christ. In 1 Peter chapter 4, 1 to 2. 1 Peter chapter 4, 1 to 2. He says, for as much as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. He that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in flesh to the loss of men, but to the will of God. Harm yourself with the mind of Christ. What is that telling us? 
It means you should dethrone and demolish negative thought structures that are inside your life. Then harm yourself with positive and holy thoughts. Push out of your mind the thoughts of evil. Clear your minds away from profitless thought. That's the second thing. The third way to overcome the flesh is to hate the flesh with perfect hatred. Hate it with perfect hatred. In 1 John chapter 2 verse 16, 1 John 2 16, For all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh and the loss of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. But look at what it says about verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. That is, make no compromise with the flesh. Form no alliance with the flesh. Yield no ground to the flesh. Decide that the flesh must not have controlling right over your life. The flesh is a rebellious child and needs to be constantly put under control. If all of a sudden now, as we're sitting down here today, I just close my eyes. I say, kaka, blah, 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 shala, kaka, blah, 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 says the Lord. That everybody who has come to this Wednesday service, the Lord said, you must all do 10 days dry fast, beginning from tonight. And don't eat again till 10 days time. There will be trouble here. Some will say, well, you see, I didn't want to come to do I didn't, want, I didn't want to come to do Some will say, why did you invite me to this kind of place? The one that is making that complaint is the flesh. Sometimes when you don't want to fast, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 12 o'clock, you have even forgotten that you have not eaten. But the day you declare you fast, by 10 a.m. in the morning, the stomach will begin to sink. That's the flesh. You need to tell it, no. No, I'm in charge. You can sing more than that. No food. Four. Recognize that you don't have to be in bondage to the flesh. You don't have to be unless you set a decision. I'm Ephesians good. chapter 2, verse 3. Recognize that you do not have to be in bondage to the flesh. I'm Ephesians good. 2, 3. Among whom also we all had our conversations in time past, in that the one. loss of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. That were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. The flesh does not have to have dominion over you. You it's have the right. power to say no. You it's have right. the power to put the flesh under subject. The fifth way to deal with the flesh is train your flesh to obey. Train your flesh to obey. That is, you must learn God's rules by reading the Bible. Then you must, with determination, make your flesh carry out your instructions and not the other way around. You must train your flesh to obey God's words. Nobody so, can no. overcome the flesh by giving in to anything he asks you to do. Nobody can overcome the flesh that way. One brother, I think we were invited to a particular send-off ceremony. And I noticed that one brother there was not touching any of the soft drink. He said, do you want a soft drink? He said, no, he wanted water. They want this, I want some water. Why some people were drinking six bottles of Maltex, two or three bottles of Coke, he was drinking water. So I said, brother, why are you not drinking anything? He said, he noticed that he was becoming addicted to it. So he decided that, look, I am in charge. Can't control me. And he stopped it. It was difficult, but he stopped it. I want you to understand this. Have that power to put that flesh on that subject. You have that power to say no to the flesh. Unlike one man, we went to the hospital. And they said, Mr. Man, you have diabetes. So stop eating sugar. Say, eh, how will I be soaking my gari? They said, you are not even allowed to soak gari. Hey, no gari. Better allow the diabetes to finish what you want. Indiscipline in the body. In 1 Peter 2.11. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. It says this. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. At least you must take action. You must abstain from fleshly lusts. Cleanse yourself from all filthiness of the flesh. You must not make provision for the flesh. The sixth way to deal with the flesh, you must put off the old man. Put him off. 
You must put off all old spiritual garments and destroy it. You must put on the new man. People need to see you and see that you have changed. The seventh way to deal with the flesh is that you must put your flesh to death. The flesh must be crucified. That flesh will not die a natural death. You must kill it by refusing to be controlled by it. You kill it by refusing to bow to his command. This is how to deal with the flesh. Look at what it says in the book of Romans. Chapter 6 from verse 6. Romans 6 to 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. The eighth way to deal with the flesh is to walk in the spirit. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Galatians 5, 16 says, This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh. Your daily walk as a Christian can be controlled by Satan walking through your flesh or the world, or demonic powers, if you permit it. But you don't have to be controlled by the world, the flesh, and the devil. You must learn to walk in the spirit. When we say walk in the spirit, I mean give easy access to the Holy Spirit in your life. To let the Holy Spirit conduct, control the whole of your conduct and life. It means to take the smallest detail of your life to the Holy Ghost. It means to listen very clearly to the Holy Ghost before you take any action. It means to surrender your tongue to the Holy Ghost. It means to allow the Holy Ghost in you to get into gear before your mouth begins to speak. That's what it means by walk in the spirit. Please try and understand, beloved. The flesh is not more powerful than the spirit. But if you let the Holy Spirit manifest his power in you, it will quicken your body of flesh. It will make it alive. You don't have to live in bondage to the flesh. The Bible says, except a grain of corn falls into the ground and dies, it abides alone. But when it dies, it can bring forth fruit. And the last way to overcome the flesh is to develop the fruit of the Holy Spirit. In contrast to the works of the flesh, develop the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which you find in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Develop the fruit of the Holy Spirit contrary to the plantation and the works of the flesh. This evening, beloved, you and I have some serious prayers to pray because it will be a tragedy. If you go away from here without a touch of heaven, let's rise up on our feet. All eyes closed. Now you see, if you are here tonight and you are not born again, you have not just surrendered your life to Jesus. Do so very quickly now. By raising up your right hand where you are and say what I'm going to say now after. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you tonight. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Bow down your heads, beloved. The first thing I'd like you to do is to confess your sins to the Lord, forgiving the flesh and allowance to control your life and your destiny. Do that from your heart now. Before we go into these power prayers, I'm believing God for some fantastic things here tonight, but it's important that we confess our sins to the Lord and tell him that we're sorry that we allow the enemy to walk in our lives. Jesus is here. His power is in this place. His authority is everlasting. His power is the absolute power. His power is the uncontestable power. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We have 14 prayers. If we don't finish today, We'll continue next time.
But these are not prayers to joke with. They are prayers on the bottom of the spirit. And please don't say, I don't think this concerns me. Shout this loud and clear. Spiritual powerlessness in my life. Can you shout this with only anger? Make it louder than that, beloved. Your time is up. Yeah! In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Aha, 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 aha. Kill the powerlessness. In Jesus' name we pray. be serious with this prayer. I saw an angel standing by one sister. The angel was frowning at her and was telling her, you have not started praying. And there is something in the arms of the angel for the sister which the angel has not handed over yet. Everybody will pray like this again. Arrows of darkness that entered into my life because of powerlessness Backfire in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth, open your mouth. That's why Jesus brought you here. Something must happen in your spirit tonight. Yes, yes, yes. Come out through the mouth, through the nose, through the womb, through the backbone. Out. Out, 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 out. Mandakapo Barabasa. The power, the power, the apostolic power. Is just the same today. No matter what they say. The power, the power, the apostolic power. It's yours, it's same to the Masikaya Boshenteraba. Aha, aha. In Jesus' name we pray. That's better. We're improving now. Sisters, shout this loud and clear after me. Sisters, say, My enemies shall die in my place. Can I hear the sister shouting this loud and clear? Brothers, shout it louder than the sister. Everybody shouting it together. In the name of Jesus. Yes. 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 Yes, 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 yes. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Today is today. Enough is enough. Today is today. Enough is enough. Today is today. Mashente karabo sopoko, ribo soponde kaya bo shente, manakapola bo korabo shente yaba, nakatora bo sopola kaya bo santa. In Jesus' name we pray. Silence now. There's a surgical operation going on in the life of one sister over there. You came here with multiple fibroids and satanic deposits. Those deposits have now disappeared. Check yourself very well, that sister. Press your womb. If you can't find a fiber there again, find a way to this altar now. 
Everybody will shout this loud and clear. Please don't allow anybody's voice to overshadow your own in this matter. Don't allow anybody's voice to overshadow your own in this matter. Every power of my father's arm that is paralyzing my power. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Mata ribo sopoko ya bashanta. Bora Capanta, the Ridaco Saponeca Yabo. In Jesus' name we pray. As a satanic arrow fired into a woman's breast, fired under armpit, fired at her back. Check those areas now. Once they, you discover they have disappeared, just find a way to this altar now. That long-standing running noose. The fire of God has dried them up. For that fellow, find a way to the other two. Something has happened to one person over there. This guy there had pockets of fire burning all over your body. Because the Lord wants something to start in your life that the enemy says cannot happen again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, is somebody over there. Two powers are fighting for supremacy over you now. The power that wants to pull you down. Let the power release you now. Let the power release you. 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 In the name of Jesus. Shout this again loud and clear. Every agenda of witchcraft for my glory. In the name of Jesus, Masopo Koya Boshente Rabakolaba, Manarabo Soponde Koya Boshente, Dekepola Boshente Rabakolaba Raba, Pia Rabo Sakata, Nakata Rabo Sata Yabosha. Deal with the agenda. Deal with the agenda. In the name of Jesus, Mosente Koya Boshente Raba. In Jesus' name we pray. They have told this brother that he has a low spam count. And indeed, one of his scrotum has gone up. Right away you are the power of God has come upon you. And the scrotum is back in position. If you are that brother, you better find your way to the altar very quickly now. Masika Aha, say this with violence. The power that does not want me to lift my head. You are a liar. Die. In the name of Jesus. Aha, 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 aha. Ba, ba, ta, ba, Ribano Kapanda Shanta Narabo Saponda Kaya Amen. Lord, I decree that the miracle of your children here shall be permanent. I barricade your miracle with the blood of Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. Shout this again loud and clear. This is a very serious matter. Very, very serious matter. There are people here that there are personalities living in them and they don't know. Every invisible power that is challenging my destiny. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. Raise your right hand to the heavens. Say my father. Make me a power generator. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and declare it. Let me be a power generator for you. In Jesus name we pray. And let's share the grace in fellowship.